Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing great. So today I'm going to talk about The Seven Deadly Sins, which is a anime on Netflix. It's actually a Netflix original. And I just finished the fourth season. So I'm going to give a little bit of rundown of the first season, <clears throat> kind of explain the second and third, and then delve into the fourth. Promise you, no spoilers, except kind of in the first, when I talk about the first season, there might be a few spoilers, but third and fourth season, promise you, no spoilers. So if you're like me and you fell behind and you need to like binge it to catch up, this isn't going to ruin it for you. So in the first season, we follow Princess Elizabeth, who is a princess of the Kingdom of Leonis, which has been taken over by tyrants, and she's got to go find Meliodas, who is a former holy knight, to try and get him to help her rescue her kingdom. She runs into him at the Boar's Hat, which is the bar he runs, um, and then together they go up to find the other people of his crew, aka the other seven deadly sins. So while they're out trying to find the other sins, trying to get together to find, you know, defeat the tyrant, there's a holy knight Hendrickson who is, you know, resurrecting the demon clan. So then once, you know, they take care of some of the tyrants and they've got to kind of defeat Hendrickson. And that's the bulk of the first season. Now, when this first came out, I absolutely loved it. I binged it all immediately and I was so disappointed there wasn't a second season. I was mainly disappointed because we only get six of the sins. We don't get the seventh one. And we actually don't get the seventh one until the third season, which I thought was kind of annoying. But one of the things I've learned about this series in general is they take a while to get to certain points. Um, not necessarily like they drag it out, but they focus on like all the different stories. You get a bunch of different, you know, subplots going on. And it's so in the like 20 episodes, 24 episodes, it a lot happens, but a lot is left unfinished, I guess you could say. Um, and for the first season, the big thing that's left unfinished is that they don't have the seventh sin. And then I got excited when the second season came out, but realized that it was actually only four episodes. I was like, eh, I don't really want to watch this right now. That's not really enough to keep my interest. And then I sort of completely forgot about the show. And then all of a sudden the third season was out and I was like, oh damn, okay, I need to rewatch this. Um, so I did, I watched the second season and I'm not gonna lie, it's a total filler season from what I remember and I don't honestly remember much. I actually kind of went back on Netflix and read the blurbs for each episode so I could remember what actually happened in the season. Um, but then the third season, Rise of the Commandments, is amazing. I seriously just binged the third and fourth season in like, I want to say about three weeks. I probably could have done it sooner, but I'm easily distracted. <laughs> but uh, the third season is amazing. We get a little more detail, some more backstory. You can feel like the writers really have dug in. We get the commandment, you know, the Ten Commandments have been risen because of what Hendrickson and Dreyfus have been doing in the previous seasons. <clears throat> so that's like the big, the big bad guy in this, or bad guys, um, in this season. And, but we're also introduced to Camelot and Arthur, which kind of ties in with the Merlin, um, with the Merlin character, which just makes my English major nerd self so happy. Like, I wish this could have came out, you know, back when I was in college, because that would have been a fun twist to write about in my class that was literally centered around King Arthur. <laughs> Um, but I really like what they did with this season where they've just, they've delved more into the actual characters because I feel like the first season's very much exposition. It's obviously a lot happens, but it's a lot of, okay, so now we have found the sloth sin and we have found, you know, this sin and that sin, but we don't get a whole lot of backstory on them. We just know that. They're one of the seven deadly sins. They're part of Meliodas' group. We get a lot more of the backstories, primarily of Bond, King, and Deanne when they go on their little side quest type things away from the main group. But we also finally get the seventh sin, Escanor, which I was very excited about because I had seen images of him, but since I hadn't watched the third season, I couldn't remember who he was and because I hadn't been, you know, 
introduced to him, but we get introduced to him, and there's a lot of really great buildup that helps tie into the fourth season. Like I said, I'm not going to get spoilers, just in case, but I really, really enjoyed the third season. I think this is where you can really feel it pick up speed, and you can just feel that it's gotten better in quality, um, writing-wise. This newest season, season four, The Imperial Wrath of the Gods, definitely my favorite season, hands down. I think some of the best writing of the series so far. We get a lot more story development and character development. Um, then this one, we get a lot of the character development of Meliodas and Elizabeth and their past, Merlin and Gother, who is my favorite character. He's amazing. And so we get all, all of these stories, and this one actually hits you in the feels. Like, this season actually made me cry at least two times. I I think, yeah, so it made me cry two times, and there was one time where I thought I was going to cry, but it actually ended up not being quite as sad as I anticipated, but it was still very heart-wrenching. And they do a lot of that in this season, and I really love where they take the characters and they've taken the story. You know, we get introduced to the goddess race, we get a lot more of the fairies and giants, and not only that, we also get a lot more of the supporting characters. We learn more about Arthur and Gilthunder and Dreyfus and, um, and uh, Hendrickson and their kids, and I love how they do that. And the best part, I feel, is that we also learn about the Ten Commandments themselves. They're no longer just these demons that they're fighting. We get why each of them were chosen as a commandment and why each of them, you know, what led them to this point and how they became commandments. So you get each of their uh, backstories and it helps you connect with them, which is what I feel like the previous seasons, like especially like the first two seasons, didn't quite do because I will, when by the time the fifth season comes out, which will hopefully be April of next year. Hey guys, coming from the future here. So I just double checked and it was originally supposed to come August of next year on Netflix, but it is now being pushed back in Japan. It's not going to air in October over there like they had originally planned. So now it's anyone's guess as to when it'll get over here because who knows when it's going to air over there. Thank you, COVID. But yeah, I will remember these characters, these bad guys, in the next, when by the time the next season comes out, whereas I currently can't remember exactly who they were fighting in the first season, you know? Whereas here, I'm not going to forget each of the Ten Commandments. Well, for the most part. They do more development on some than others, uh, which I'm not going to name names because I don't want to give anything away, but I'll leave it at that. They really help you connect with the various people. And I loved that. But yeah, so, you know, overall, this is just a much more developed story. And there are still loose ends at the end of this season. And that makes me excited for a next season because I want to see what they do next. Like, they've built it and built it and built it. And we're just, we're not quite there yet. We need a, a full satisfactory ending. It's, we're sort of on the cusp, but not quite there. And so I'm very much hoping that we do get the fifth season soon so we can start tying up some of these loose ends but I'm not I'm not too upset with them because it was what written so well and they built up to each and every moment so it doesn't really leave me feeling like I'm lacking anything but I do want more I feel like this season specifically hooked me in from the beginning and carried me all the way through the end um there are a lot of little twists and turns that happen in it, so it there, it never once feels like it's dragging. I definitely recommend it, especially if you like this kind of anime. It does a great job of including all of the characters, uh, which is a feat because there's a lot of characters, because it's not just the main seven or I guess eight with Elizabeth, the main eight characters. Um, they do a great job of including all the other side characters as well. So, I highly recommend it, but let me know down below, what did you think about it? Have you caught up on the fourth season? Have you only watched the first? Have you watched none of it? 
tell me what you think. Comment down below. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll definitely do some more anime videos in the future, I promise. Um, kind of a huge anime fan, so, you know, there will be more anime videos. Let me know what you like to see. And as always, have a wonderful day, and stay safe and healthy out there.